So let's talk about storage engines in MariaDB, which is, I, I think, a uh, unique feature in MariaDB especially because MySQL supports storage engines too, but MariaDB has more of them. So I think this really shines in MariaDB. And they are pluggable. You can add them to a, a MariaDB server and they, they are simultaneous also. So they can you can have several of them working in one single installation of MariaDB. And there are many, many storage engines. For example, you have InnoDB for you know your operations, uh, the operations that your application supports. That's what you are going to use most of the time, InnoDB. Uh, is transactional, it supports all the good stuff. Um, you have a column store, ironically, on a in a hor horizontal fashion there, right in the middle, even though it stores data in columns, right? So vertically, uh, that's for analytics. So you don't have to worry about indexes and this kind of stuff, which is sometimes hard to maintain, especially when you have tons and tons of tables. Um, column store is very, very good for those uh, cases. So you can do analytics with MariaDB. You have also, what else, uh, MyRocks, initially developed by uh, Facebook. Um, it handles um, write-heavy workloads. And the opposite, maybe you could tell that, uh, like uh, read-heavy workloads. Aria, which is like Maria without the M, that's where the name comes from. Uh, you can store data in memory. You don't have to go to the disk. Uh, that's another option you have. You can optimize for the cloud with the S3 engine you can do uh, charting with the spider engine you can read or write data in csv files um you get the idea right so there are many many storage engines available for mariadb and yeah there may be one or two there in these uh, uh, cloud of terms um that are not under heavy development or maybe even deprecated i don't know but you get the idea that's not a bad thing that means that the server has been evolving towards the engines that actually are needed these days with the current state of the hardware and the cloud and what developers need. Now, let's say that we have this MariaDB server, right? So I installed MariaDB server on my machine or in the cloud or, or in my own server somewhere in production. Doesn't matter, you install MariaDB server, that's that square. Now, inside the server, there is something called the SQL API, which is what your applications would use, right? They are going to send um, SQL statements. SQL code is sent to this MariaDB server through the SQL API. Now you do that, your application do that through something called connectors. And connectors are libraries, you can, you can say that, um, that you include or you import into your application and they are available for Java, which is very, very performant. There's a JDBC driver for it. Python, which is based on the uh, C++ connector. So these both are very uh, performant as well. If you use JavaScript or TypeScript on the server side with uh, Node.js, you can have, uh, you can find a connector, an official connector uh, for MariaDB. And there are many others uh, developed by the community. Mm, the thing is that once you send these or your application sends these uh, SQL code to the server through one of the connectors, that goes through a storage engine API, right? So that's something inside, again, the server. And this storage engine API is going to delegate to one or more storage engines. So for example, again, we have InnoDB, which is for general purpose, uh, like mix, read, write uh, workloads. So you're doing those more or less the same. Uh, you have Common Store for analytics. You have um, area for uh, reading intense workloads. It's very lightweight. I think MariaDB server uses that for some of the system tables, uh, if not all of them. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think that's the case. But anyway, you get the idea. My rocks, which is optimized for SSD, so write intense uh, um, workloads. Spider to scale out. Scale out means having more uh, nodes. So you take your data, and then you partition that data and put uh, pieces, so to speak, these slices of data on each server. That's called uh, charting, database charting. Uh, the Spider engine helps you to do that. You can uh, use S3 for object storage uh, on the cloud, which is uh, 
uh, uh, low cost, right? Uh, the cool thing here is that all these engines live in these in the same MariaDB server. You have them there at the same time, right? That's uh, something to keep in mind. Now, after that, the storage engine just go, just you know uses the storage that it's uh, designed for. Um, for example, memory or or S3 or object storage, um, uh, depending on what the storage engine again is designed for. Um, in fact, if you take a fresh installation of MariaDB and you run show engines from a client, this is the command line, but you can use dbeaver or whatever. Um, then you'll see some of the uh, storage engines that are available by default, right? You don't have to do anything. You have these already. So you have the CSV engine, you have the memory uh, engine, ARIA, and you have a couple of uh, my ISM uh, engines. You have the InnoDB, which is the default, right? It's the one that supports transactions and low level locking frame keys and all these, all the cool stuff uh, that uh, uh, relational databases uh, have. You have something called the performance schema, which is not, it's a special one. This is different. This is for storing what performance uh, information or, or stats about the database is off by default. You have to enable these with a variable, I think it's called something similar performance schema. And you have to set that to on in the configuration files, or you can do it through uh, uh, a command, I think could be set global for performance schema equals one, for example, uh, that would activate it. Mm, you have the sequence uh, stretch engine, which is also uh, a bit interesting because it kind of, it, you, you can use it to, gener to generate sequence of numbers, basically. And you can configure like where to start from one, two, 10 or five, whatever. And then uh, the step, how many steps, maybe one every 10, right? So 10, 20, 30, or whatever the number is, mm, that's pretty good. That's very interesting uh, for queries and maybe filling uh, demo data, this kind of stuff. Um, all right, so that's what you get out of the box when you install MariaDB. That's how storage engines work. That's the, that's the idea behind it. And that's why it's so powerful and interesting. But let me show you this. You can do cross engine SQL query. So let's say we are developing an application, right? A web application, and we expect a lot of users leaving comments there. So we have to create a table called comments. We specify some columns there. It doesn't matter where the columns are right now, but we expect tons, tons of users leaving comments, uh, tons, tons of them per hour, you know, per second even. So. This is right heavy. So we can optimize MariaDB for these use case by saying here, engine equals my rocks. Or if the table already exists and then we are noticing that oh, people are really commenting a lot, uh, it's uh, it's a bit expensive the, you know, the, to store this data in the cloud. We want to save some money on that. We can say alter table comments, engine equals my rocks, done, it's optimized for write heavy workloads. That's pretty cool. Now, on the other hand, maybe we have a, a table called categories with some columns too. Uh, and these, uh, these categories, they don't change ever, or maybe they change every five years, or I don't know, right? So it's kind of the opposite, but maybe they're, you, you have to read them very frequently. So maybe we can use engine equals area, and now it's optimized for read heavy. Now, to be honest, I would use here InnoDB because InnoDB has amazing uh, cache cap capabilities. So that's probably what you want to use in these uh, in this case. Mm, but you could use memory if for some reason that's better. You know, always test these things. It's available to you, so you can take whatever works for you. Uh, that's the cool thing about these um, uh, this feature in MariaDB. Now let's say we want to create some report or something or. There's some query that we need to run in our in our application. So we do select all columns. Never do select star in your application, right? <laughs> Specify the columns. It's, it's going to be much easier to maintain. It's not going to break that easy as this one, but you get the idea, right? Then we say from the table comments, and we join the these uh, table with the categories. Yeah, we're mi mixing the data there somehow. 
maybe we add some on clause there and a where clause as well. So at this point, we have in a single query two storage engines working. So that's pretty cool. So you can you can mix these uh, storage engines in, and or or have a query that mixes both of them, or maybe even more of them. Mm, that's the power of uh, also the power of the storage engines living in one single MariaDB installation. So this is cross engine SQL queries. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, um, I have. A video where I explain. Let me move uh, these over here. Explain a little bit about the different workloads uh, that MariaDB mm, is able to to handle. Uh, it's a very short video. If you want to to watch it, it's available on on YouTube. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this one. All right. So I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think, and let me also know what you would like to learn in the future. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.